Okay, but so when you became um, leader, did you have did you have people fussing around you to see you know make sure you're wearing the right thing that your hair was perfect your makeup was perfect i can't kind of believe you did but yeah I'm no not really <laughs> so it, it, i mean you know it, it's not like being the prime minister or something down here where you have like a driver and an entourage and all the rest of it being the leader of an opposition party in scotland um you've got a nice young man and it usually is a young man that helps carry your kit around with you <laughs> And that's about it. That's it you know, yeah. did my own driving for, you know, throughout the whole thing, like all, all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah. so you don't have an entourage for a start. But um, I mean, I, I did because I wanted to not let people down and stuff. Um, I, I did let myself get talked into having my colours done. Okay. It, so I, I have somewhere got like one of those little books with all your colours in it. Which, you were winter. Were you told you were a winter? I think it was a bit weird. It was an ex-bank manager that did this on the side out of her house in Jordan Hill in Glasgow. Oh. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how professional a service it really okay. was. She was a lovely woman, don't get me yeah. wrong. But I, I mean, it had things like yellow in there. Uh, and I don't think anyone suits yellow, really. Yeah, <laughs> not, well, yeah. not, not when they're as pale as this. <laughs> it, had, it had blues, browns, blacks, greys, in terms of kind of base colours. And it also had every other colour. Um, purples and reds and pinks and and but also like pale green like the the wall the paint that all municipal Ooh. buildings got painted yeah. in the 80s and 90s like that was in there a kind of pale minty green and again they just wash you out it's awful so, so jewel colors for you which you wear your your jewel like sapphire and ruby and is that is that what it's called yeah that's oh, that you know, winter. right okay Just well like, I, I will take that to the bank thank you yeah but, but if, so if you want, if you want to, if you want to come and, and actually show me how to dress. I will. I would I? love that. Come and do that. Can I do yeah, that? Yeah, of course. That'd be brilliant. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I can love that. Take, should we take? Oh, yeah, let's take on it. Okay, I'm coming yeah. up. I'm going to take you shopping. Okay. If there's any shops left after coronavirus. No, oh, yeah, I know. You know, I feel so sorry for retailers. Let's go there because it's just... Yeah, no, I do. I feel... I feel for yeah. business owners generally and retailers in particular, because retail was having such a tough time. Before. Anyway, yeah. Um, and like I say, you know, part of Jen's family's all worked in retail and all the rest of it. And I, yeah. you know, I know it's really, really tough. And some people have done very well. I've got good online offerings, but there is a point where you want to go into a shop. You want to really? see things. You want yeah. to see windows that are dressed. You want to try yeah. clothes on. You want to, you know, you want to, you don't just want a plastic bag to come through the letterbox and, and then send it back three days later because it doesn't fit. You know, you, you, you want the experience of retail as well. And as it's retail. such a part of kind of communities as well. You know, people, it's a social thing, mothers and daughters and friends going out to shop and uh, it's, it's devastating and God knows what the answer is. Um, but yeah, I, we'll, we'll, go, we'll find the last few shops, even if we have to <laughs> the breadth and length of the country, we'll do it. Do you have, I mean, I, I would imagine in politics, you've got to be strong all the time, you know, emotionally strong. You've got to have your armor and your protection. So do you have a comfort blanket of any kind? And it could be something that sort of either protects you or comforts you. Um, like clothing wise, do you mean? Clothing wise, yeah. Oh, it could be anything. Is there something that comes with you almost everywhere? Yeah, I mean, I, I um, I do love, like I say, I, I do love a kind of brightly coloured scarf. And in, in winter, in, I, I actually don't care what kind of suit or boots or whatever I'm wearing, um, as long as I've got a nice kind of, usually three quarter length or quite long kind of fitted coat, like nice uh, yeah. black or, or, or navy uh, coat with like a bright scarf. And I always mm. feel like I'm, I look all right. Yeah, like that, and that covers a lot multitude of sins, and also in places where um, you don't really know what the dress code's going to be, or that sort of thing. I, I think you know, if, as, as long as you look neat, you kind of get away with most things. So I like clean lines. I don't like fussy things. I don't like frills. I don't like um, you know, kind of epaulets and tassels and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I never really have done like a, a a nice something that's well cut. I mean. Um, or that has a clean line. Yeah, it's, it's I I just personally quite like. I'm, I you, don't have lots of ornaments in my house. I'm quite an unfussy yeah. person. I don't, that, you, 
rings or anything you know that's right for you because you've got quite big boobs and those are our i mean i'm the same and i if i put as soon as i put a frill on i look like a barmaid as soon as i wear a pattern i look like a kind of sort of matron, dowager matron sorry that's my dog dowager matron so it is clean lines are, are great and especially as we get older i think that you know clean lines clean lines kill it every time they're the best yeah i mean i think you're right i've, I've always had quite a big chest um, and yeah. and i think that you know I, I i breastfed for six months as well so it's it's not in the same place it used to be mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So, if we could do some underwear shopping as well when you come up, for that would be sure. brilliant. Well, yeah, for sure. I'm literally <laughs> now. Okay, look, hang on. Oh, now, careful. Does this carry a health warning? Is this a fifteen? It's just between you and me. Hang on. <laughs> Here, I've got not one. So, I've got two bras on. Can you see? All right. Okay. Two bras on. So that's. I'm always trying to kind of right. large these, but anyway. But Ruth, have you ever, because I mean, you must have had so many opportunities to have a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> yes, uh, I have. I, I, I want to show you that I think the funniest one that I've had, and it's not because I, it's in bad taste, although I'm pretty sure that there are people that think my taste is pretty questionable. Um, I have a big sister and I've got a couple of older cousins who are also, mm -hmm. uh, female so I grew up in hand-me-downs my whole yeah. you know so I would have been vaguely fashionable three years after the fashion was the fashion okay you know? yeah. classic so, yeah yeah that classic um but this is uh I think a not hideous um sort of bottle green uh sort beautiful of beautiful colour for you a cowl neck sheath dress and this yeah. was a bridesmaid's dress I was a bridesmaid for a very good friend of mine who lived in Adelaide in Australia um, because I was living in Scotland, um, she sent, uh, and the other bridesmaids were all to the four winds, she sent a bolt of fabric over and said, just, we're going to have all the bridesmaids in this fabric, get a dress made that, that you want to wear, and it doesn't matter if they're all different, um, we will... Never. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so yeah. lovely. Um, and because she'd been living in, in Scotland uh, before she got engaged, and because there was lots of people flying over from Scotland and other countries to Australia, rather than have the turn up for the wedding, um, speak to the bride and groom for five minutes as they go round uh, and then they jump off on their honeymoon and all these people that have flown three and a half thousand miles don't actually see them what they chose to do which was lovely was they had us all over three weeks before the wedding the wedding yeah. was all parted we all went on a road trip all the, all the brits with them for three weeks around the country oh uh, lovely we went to the, the wine valley we went uh short um uh, red snapper fishing in coffin bay we we you know we, we had this lovely lovely time of three weeks on holiday and then we got to the morning of the wedding and i put the dress on except i couldn't didn't what? fit <gasps> didn't fit i'd had three weeks on the lash <laughs> you were too much measured <laughs> stormies and yeah, yeah, all, all of that sort of thing uh, uh, so, yeah, completely and, and like not wearable like as in not even like sausage legs <laughs> what was fantastic oh yeah because my my weight is barometers up and down it's really easy to put on weight and hard to take it off in three but, um, weeks though well maybe a month <laughs> What? Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, I mean, you can, it's not hard to put on half a stone yeah. for weeks. And if it's a sheath dress, it's not going to yeah. be pretty. So the morning of my friend's wedding, and I feel, I still feel guilty about this. I'd also got a, like a wrap, a kind of stole to wear over my arms. Yeah. We took a set of shears. And we went straight up the back of the dress. And the bride's mother and the bride's auntie sewed the stole in as a panel at the back. And you can actually see here. So they should have been looking forward to their daughter's wedding. They are sewing a panel into a dress for one of the like Scottish bridesmaids that couldn't turn down a sausage sandwich. Isn't that the worst dress story you've ever heard? That is, you know what I love about that? It's not about, it's not about getting, you know, being unfashionable or wearing the wrong type of thing. It's that dress let you down. But actually, <laughs> you let 
the dress down is genius. Oh my God, yeah. that's the best story. But that, Ruth, is a fabulous color. That's probably one of your best colors. And, and the orangey uh, Yeah, I, I, really, I really like it, actually. I really like dark greens. Mm. Um, I don't wear them often, you're right. But I, I maybe, sh uh, maybe, maybe when I'm free of politics, I'll wear more. I can, I can blossom like a butterfly. I can exit my, my trouser suit chrysalis and blossom well, like you a have, Wait for me, I'm gonna come and hold your hand. Um, and my darling, so... <sighs> What about um, your birthday suit? Is that is that a dress or a jacket or a anything that is like your celebratory item of clothing? Do you know I've got um, I've got some bling that I love to wear. It's yeah. not clothing, so I've got a kind of uh, I've got a double strand drop diamante. I mean, nice. yeah. um, but you know, set of earrings, and it's a a, a chain that is not a chain and um, it, it's like diamante there and it's got a double it's got a double strand okay. drop as well and, and they're they're asymmetric which that's my kind of go-to dressing up and I, I love a clutch bag as well we oddly i don't know why oh, uh, i don't i don't like a handbag but i yeah. love a clutch you love a clutch yeah i'm always yeah. Nervous. i'm gonna leave it somewhere but... and, and i quite like a, i like quite like a wrap um if i'm if yeah. i'm you know if i'm i'm going to like a, a an award stew or a posh do or a black tie or a dinner or something like that that i've got to um I'm, I, I do quite like feeling like I'm playing the part. Yeah. Is that, is that Jean Paul Sartre thing of um, he's not a waiter, he's playing the part of the waiter? I often feel like I don't fit in. So I often feel like I'm playing the part of it. But yeah. I feel like I'm playing the part properly. I've got a nice kind of, actually, I think it comes from Marks and Spencers of all places, but I've got a, a really nice kind of wrap thing that's kind of half wrap, half cape, but it's got a, it's got a um, sparkle in it. Nice. And it's, it's really nice weight to it. Okay. And it, the way, the way it comes across, the way it comes across is I think it looks quite classy and I, I don't often look classy. So that makes me feel, that makes me walk half an inch taller. Yeah. Okay. And if you, I feel that I can't walk in. Oh no. <laughs> But have you always had short hair too? Because you've got amazingly oh. thick hair. Yeah, and it's getting thicker. So, yeah. so I look at the fifth beetle at the moment because my my partner has been cutting it during lockdown. She's but I think she's, she's done all right, actually. Yeah. She, she's done okay, but I mean, it desperately needs. Yeah. We're, we're in trouble in Scotland yeah. because well, we're, we're not getting hairdressers up until the fifteenth. So, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to be shaggy kind of Highland cat cattle, like looking yeah. out through the fringes for a bit longer. Okay. But um. But yeah, no, I used to, I used to have a kind of bob down to about, about there. Um, How tall are you? Five foot five. Okay. Just a smidge under five foot five. Yeah. So, um, but I go through phases where I grow it a bit and then realise that actually it just annoys me and I just want to cut it again. Well, you're I, so lucky that you suit short hair. I would love to have short hair, but I, my head then looks like a sort of pip growing out of a flower pot because I've got a really small head. I've got a little pip of a head. But I really envy people who can have short hair. Yeah, I mean, I think, weirdly, it's quite hard to find a hairdresser that understands short hair. Yeah, it's got to be cut really well. Sorry, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, to be fair to her, like, I think she did pretty well. I was quite nervous yes. handing her the scissors. Um, and then when she finished, I was like, oh, actually, that's all right. Do you want me to do you? And she was like, no, I'll do myself. Yeah. So she would have been nowhere near her doing hers. So, yeah, yeah. But then I, I did clip the dog and it was awful. So she maybe has got a point. Yeah, she had a point. All right, my darling. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go. But I, I really mean it. I will come up to Scotland. Yeah, I come it. up to Scotland quite a lot. We go up to um, our family. We, we come up a lot. I love Scotland so much. Where's your family based? We go to near um, Athol, near Blair Athol. Oh, lovely, yeah. Okay. And we go hiking in the Cairngorms there and um a, a place called glen tilt oh so stunning i just it's I, I love that road so you if you're you're driving up say if you arrive at Edinburgh airport or whatever and you're driving yeah. up and <clears throat> you've got these nice kind of you've got the flatness of fife and then you get to the kind yeah. of rolling hills and then <clears throat> excuse me what is it, the a9 yeah yeah you get yeah. to perth and you've got that lovely kind of forest mixed deciduous that was planted to look yes. like the greenland so you've got all these colors in it and then suddenly you hit the highland line and you, and you get the, the you get the grandeur of the peaks because yeah. <laughs> people think scotland all looks the same and it doesn't there's yeah. like there's different elements of scotland and, and that road takes you through a lot of them and it's yeah. and then you get to where this the cairn grounds you get to the scree and the kind of the bracket scree, yeah. and walking across scree nightmare yes it is oh i love it so much it's where i feel where it's where I'm happiest. 
Glen Tilt is where I'm happiest. Well, yeah. come on up. We'll yeah. stop off at George Street on the way. I'm going to. Well, listen, I'm going to see you soon, honey. <laughs> and, and Ruth, I'm just, I'm genuinely, I'm, I'm so excited to have met you. And it's a real honour and you're fucking great. Oh, bless you. What are you going to do after politics, by the way? Because you said you're stopping in March, is that right? Next year? Yes. So, so the parliament stops in March and then the elections in May. So you always have that break of yeah. six weeks. Well, well, those that are trying to get re-elected get elected. So um, I made some promises when I stood down, which was that I would be a bit more present. Uh, so I'm still got a few things that are, I'm looking at, but um, it's not going to be going from one big job to another big job. So I think I'm going to do little projects. So I've got more yeah. time in the house to spend with Finn. And, you know, at some point, hopefully, maybe a little brother or sister for Finn. So. Okay, fantastic. What, what a great a future your imminent future is sorted and it sounds wonderful it sounds the next, the next three or four years and then i'll get bored and then i'll have to do another big job again because i'm yeah. as you've seen i'm hyperactive so I, hyperactive. Hate, yeah. I i hate not doing things so the duracell bunny well listen <laughs> you are amazing and thank you so much ruth i've loved talking to you i mean i can't believe we've spoken for nearly an hour it's just gone right. yeah oh well there you go well, i'll see you soon I'll see you soon.